Hello everyone, I'm Ishwara Srinivasan. Welcome back to my channel. Today is the first episode for the series of Women in Tech Pioneers. And I'm super excited to have Shanta Mohan with us. I am planning to start this series in order to bring out all the women leaders who are there and who have been the pioneers in the field because there is so much to learn from them about how they paved their way into technology and to being leaders in the technology field. So Shanta Mohan is a global technical leader, entrepreneur and three time author with over 30 years of experience running distributed engineering teams worldwide. Shanta co-founded Retail Solutions, which is a leader in retail analytics in the consumer packaged goods domain. She used to run product development for the company and was responsible for scaling the product development team worldwide and delivering multiple applications. Shanta is currently a mentor and project guide at the Integrated Innovation Institute at Carnegie Mellon Silicon Valley. She co-delivers the courses, contributes to the curriculum design, and mentors students in the projects and practicals. Shanta has over 20 years of experience focusing on mission-critical systems to support semiconductor and other high-value added manufacturing. At Consilum, now part of Applied Materials, she led the development of three generations of manufacturing execution systems. If I may call, she is the OG pioneer in technology. And can you believe it if I tell you that she came here in the 80s for doing her PhD in CMU, which is completely amazing. Thank you so much, Shanta, for being with us. Thank you, Aishwarya. Thank you for having me. I'm just very curious to know, like, uh, what piqued your interest in retail industry in the first place? Uh, I came by it uh, by accident, Aishwarya. It was not an intentional thing. Um, the reason being, when we were looking at starting a company, we were going to do that using RFID data. And at that time, uh, Walmart had just mandated that all their suppliers tag the product so that they can track the journey of the product all the way from the suppliers through distributors to the store and then to the customer. So they really wanted to get uh, the life of the product, if you will, on record. Now, unfortunately, the RFID tags and the reads they generated weren't mature enough. Mm -hmm. So we had to kind of say, okay, this is not going to work. So we fell back on the uh, wall style data, the point of sale and shipping and so on. And, and, and we used that data to deliver uh, applications such as out of stock analysis and other uh, products to the retail industry and, and be, we became a leader. That's amazing. Like that's that's just amazing how you got into this field. And I wanted to ask, like, have you ever felt an imposter syndrome when you were like, you know, starting new into the field when you were new into the company? If so, how did you like navigate through it? What I want to say is all of us feel a little bit of a doubt at some point or the other in our career, in our journey. And to me, um, this imposter syndrome is not just one thing, but it's rather a, a spectrum, if you will. Uh, it, it goes from, you know, really great self-doubts to, huh, am I doing this right? Kind of a thing. Every now and then I would get into this question of, am I good enough? And yeah. when that doubt comes up, what I do is I kind of open my mind and ask myself, so why am I thinking this way? And I try to find the reason why I think that way. And I question myself. And then I say, well, if you are doubtful about this particular aspect of what you're doing, go learn more. So to me, it became a way to keep myself learning continuously. So my lifelong learning principle is really because I don't want to feel the imposter syndrome and, you know, learning always helps. That's a very, uh, very, very nice way, very positive way that you flipped into. Mm -hmm. And that's amazing. Like that, that could be totally a motivating factor for you to do better, for you to learn more and, you know, mm -hmm. look mm -hmm. up to people whom you might think are like much better than you and like learn from them. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And as a female leader, 
who was a pioneer who probably faced a lot of these barriers in the very uh, like very early stage or like you know you were probably looking at these barriers and you were like oh wow like i don't i don't know really how to navigate it i don't have somebody to really guide me through it mm-hmm. so did you face any of these challenges when you were uh, sort of transitioning to become a leader in tech and how did you like go through these ro- roadblocks if i look back i really can't say that i came across any of the typical roadblocks women say they face in the workplace uh, that could be because the workplace has become also very competitive right mm-hmm. in the days when i was making my career transitions from one level to the next to the next the only thing that seemed to matter is how well i do and and i really never you know uh, looked around and said oh i am being uh, discriminated or anything else like that i was just focused on uh, being the best i can be in what i do and that seems to have uh, carried me the challenge that i had was really you know managing the work uh, aspects and the family aspects that mm-hmm. is the toughest thing i believe for any women you know you know set aside all the other <laughs> issues but i think that is the one that i feel um i i struggled with and i think many of us struggle with because when you are here at work you know attending to some things you always have in my mind oh my god am i not doing something for my family and yeah. vice versa right that to me was the biggest challenge wow yeah that's 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 something like uh, you know you said something which is really uh, getting to me is you said that you know like you didn't face any kind of like gender related roadblocks because you felt your work took you to that's the true. next step and that is something which comes out really really strong about about you because maybe from your end you didn't really feel that but it's it's very strong of you to you know have the opinion and say that my work took me further ahead and that's one thing maybe we can learn because at times we are you know like we do uh, experience these challenges which are gender related we do uh, we do acknowledge it we do see that in workplace right. but feel what really pushes you or like you know us uh, advocating for women or yeah, like us advocating for ourselves would be more stronger would be more prominent if our work did it for us oh yeah so i absolutely like that that's something which very strongly resonated with me and i will also like ask you because you were mentioning about like you know balancing family work life was pretty pretty challenging for you as when you were growing into leadership and you were taking up more responsibilities so what was your secret mantra about like you know balancing all of this um <clears throat> i want to say i want to be honest and say while i was going through it i don't think i knew uh, everything it was more or less uh, winging it you know trying to do the best i can wherever i was making the uh best of whatever i had in front of me one aspect though i think this is something that i um, tell all my mentees who are uh, looking at their careers and then saying you know how am i going to manage all this is that you have to develop support systems right. you have to have either if you are married uh, and you have kids you know you have to have the support of your spouse Uh, and vice versa you need to support your spouse too and if you have such a support system then you are able to manage all the demands that are there at home yeah. now similarly you need a support system at work too yeah your coworkers your colleagues your supervisor your you know your team mm-hmm. all of them uh, make sure you ha- have very good relationship Uh, across the board and when you are in need they will step up for you uh, i'll give you one example okay. um, when a crisis developed at work um it this was a time when my daughter was expecting her twins and i had promised i was going to be there for the delivery support her and this crisis required me to travel to another location and be away just exactly at the time when the due date was mm-hmm. i thought about it and i said i'm not going to go it 
I made a commitment and I have to keep it. So mm -hmm. I turned to my team and my VP of engineering said, I will go, Shanta, I will go do it. You can be remotely supporting me and we can get this taken care of. And that's how I uh, we address that crisis. So if you have a strong team supporting you and you have strong, uh, you know, home life, I, I think it'll work. So the key is to have support. And some people may not have the spouse and for them, you can always develop the network, you know, mm -hmm. friends and family member, other family members, you got to have it without that. It's very, very hard. Yeah. Yeah, I, I completely understand that. And I feel from my perspective right now, I don't have kids. I don't have responsibilities yeah. for that matter. So yeah. it just feels easier because uh, for me, the focus of my life is my career, my yeah. responsibility, or like, yeah. you know, my yeah. me is probably the uh, focus, focus point yeah. in my life. But then yeah. That is going to change at some point. At some and point. <laughs> I, I feel like what, what you're mentioning is like so very critical because at some point you're going to feel terrible, right? Like for no particular reason. There are going to be times when you're breaking down. There's going to be times when your work is not going as you're expecting. There'll be times when your personal life is not going as expected. Sure. And that point, it's very, very important to have the support system because that is what will keep you going through this entire journey. Uh, I don't know, like, I just feel that it's very inspiring when I talk to women like you, like, you know, women who are pioneers in the field, because uh, the, the time that I am living in, or like, you know, the Gen Z are living in, it's very, very different, right? Yeah, like, absolutely. we have so many women leaders to look up to, we have yeah. such well paved paths for us, that we can see, we can, uh, we can observe, we can learn from what has been done in the last few decades. And we are just, you know, like, following the footpath of the women leaders who have created these paths for us. Yeah. So thank you so much, like, because it's, it's very, very inspiring. I remember the last time we met, I was very, like, completely blown away. I was, you know, like, starstruck. And talking to you, it gave me so much more confidence, so much more inspiration about doing things which are greater in life. And just looking at your energy is very, it's very, very contagious. Like, you keep on pushing uh, the barriers, you know, like, you're keeping on doing things and so many great things. And you never seem to quit. Like, <laughs> that's something that's just amazing. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Ashwari. I draw my inspiration from youngsters like you. You know, I look at all the kind of things that you're doing and I go, go, Aishwarya. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. Thank you so Thank much. You. Like this Thank was you. such an amazing talk. And I really hope everybody who is watching this video, you also find inspiration in what we spoke about. Like I hope you had some tips that you can take back and like, you know, some of the learnings that you can apply to yourself, which will help you be a stronger leader. So thank you so much, everyone, for watching the video. And thank you so much, Shanta, for having uh, having uh, joining us. Bye bye.